All right, for the last two sections, I'm just gonna kind of walk through these things with you um, because there's not extra practice problems. So for the first one, we're gonna go ahead and graph this quadratic, so x squared minus 11x plus 10. Um, when you graph it in the default window, you can't see all of the graph very well, and so it's kind of helpful to have a good idea of like, okay, what's the other x-intercept gonna be? Where's the vertex at? That sort of thing. And so typically to help me figure out these types of situations, I look at the table, and I know that the other x-intercept was like closer to where x was 10. So I can see, okay, so that means if I wanna be able to see it like this, I probably need to go past 10 for the x max. Um, and then as far as the y min and max, I can see that my y min, my negative y values need to be pretty big. And I can see that my y minimum happens somewhere between five and six for the x value. And it's a little bit past 20. So when I change my window, I'll change my X max to maybe be like 14 or something. And then my Y min should be something smaller than negative 20, maybe like negative 26. Um, y max could be less big, but something like that so I can see it. It's okay if it doesn't match up this screen perfectly, but if I wanna be able to see the whole thing, that's kind of like what my screen needs to be. So my window I did um, negative 10, 14, scale means um, am I going by ones, am I going by twos? So if you look right now on your graph, you can see on the y-axis the tick marks are really close together. If you wanted to go by like twos, you can see that they're a little bit more spread out now when it's graphed. Um, you could even do something like go by fives they're spread out even more. So that's just what they mean by the scale. Um, for y min, I had negative 26. For y max, I had 10. And then I'll go ahead and just leave the scale as one. That's fine. Okay. Um, next one, we're going to go ahead and find the x-intercepts. So I'm just going to clear my calculator. Second plus 712. So I'm starting over again. And so here the quadratic is x squared minus x minus 1. And to find the x-intercepts, I've seen people do it a couple different ways. My preference is to do second trace and then use the zero option because the zero is like the zeros of the graph, which are the x-intercepts. I have also seen teachers who teach you to go in and say that y2 is a horizontal line at zero. And then when you do that, it would be graphing a line. We just can't see it. And then when you do that, you can use the intersect option and find where the two lines cross. So it is up to you. Both of those methods are valid. I would say actually the intersect option is probably a little bit easier in that case, but um, we still have to use this method of left bound and right bound for other things. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So second trace option number two, I have to take the cursor to the left side of the x intercept and press enter. Then I take the cursor to the right side of the intercept and press enter. It's going to guess. The guess is always stupid. I press enter one more time. And so this x-intercept is negative 0.618. And I'll go ahead and label it in the picture. Okay. And then I'll do the same thing for the other one. So second trace number two. I'm going to have the cursor on the left side of the intercept and press enter and then move the cursor to the right side of the intercept and press enter. The guess is stupid. 1.618. Okay. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and solve, um, or not solve, but I guess we're finding the intersection of two different graphs which is also a good shortcut for solving an equation, but I think I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so there's, I've got a linear function and a quadratic function, and I wanna find out where the two functions intersect. So I'm gonna do 
second trace number five. And you do not have to put the cursor exactly on the intersection. It just has to be closer to one of them. So right now it's closer to the left intersection than the right one, so it's going to find that one. And all I do is once I move it closer, I just press enter three times and it will find it. So the intersection points, uh, we have an X coordinate of negative 3.236 and a Y coordinate of negative 0.236. And then for the other one, I'm going to do second trace, number five. Um, again, I'm just moving the cursor closer to the other intersection. I do not have to be touching it. And then one, two, three, with the enter. And I've got Page is good. Um, next, finding maximums and minimums. And so here we'll go ahead and graph this. Again, I could clear my calculator if I wanted, but I didn't mess with anything other than to graph it, which is why I'm just going to go ahead and type this one. Okay. So you can see that the calculator is actually a little bit zoomed in compared to my screen. I can do a problem just fine without zooming in, but if I want to kind of make it closer, then I just need my intervals to be smaller numbers. And then it has that effect of zooming in. Okay, so for the maximum, I'm going to do second trace. I'll look for number four, the max. And I have to do left bound, right bound. So I'm going to go to the left side of the top of the mountain. So I'm definitely on the left side of it, press enter. Then I'm gonna scroll to the right and get to the right side of it and press enter. I ignore the guess because the guess is dumb. And then it tells me that that is the maximum point. So negative 1.155, 2.079. Okay, and now we'll find the minimum. Again, I'm going to do be on the left side of the minimum, press enter, move to the right side of the minimum, press enter, 1.155, negative 4.079. Okay. Now, when you have done math in the lower level math classes, you would typically say that the local maximum and the local minimum were a point and you would want the X and the Y coordinate. And when we talk about maximum and minimum, we're not talking about a location, we're talking about a value. So we would say that the local maximum value is 2.079. That's the output of the function. Um, that's what the function is worth. And so typically the y coordinate is actually what we care about. Or we would say the minimum value of the function is negative 4.079. That's what we care about. So in calculus, it is very important to differentiate between where the local max is located, which is the x coordinate, and what the local max actually is, which is the y coordinate. So I'm not going to make you write this sentence every time, but if you don't understand the difference between the X coordinate and the Y coordinate and what they represent, you're going to get a lot of things confused and get problems wrong when you do these because we, we do not write them as coordinates. We consider what it's asking. Is it asking the location or is it asking for the value? And then based on that, we have our answer. So the local maximum is located at negative 1.155. But the value of it is 2.079. The local min is located at 1.155, but its value is negative 4.079. So that is something to think about. All right, um, so the next section is going to think about, like, how can we use what we know about calculators to actually solve problems or find information? This is going to be really, really important for um, calculus when you are doing problems where you are not capable of solving the equation. It's like beyond what we know how to do or when you're doing a free response question that's calculator active because it saves time. OK, so first we're going to look at how to solve the inequality um, written up here to x squared uh, minus 9x plus 3. 
had changed my window, so this is going to look different. I'll go ahead and change it back. So if you don't want to change it back, you could go ahead and um, reset your calculator, clear the memory, and then it will go back to the default settings. Okay, so if I wanted to know where this function was greater than or equal to zero, what that means is the outputs of the function have to be greater than or equal to zero, and that's the y coordinates. So if I'm thinking about where are my y coordinates greater than zero, that's up here. That's where the y coordinates are positive. The y coordinates equal zero at the x intercepts. So the answer for this problem would be this x intercept and up this, this x-intercept and up. So if I want to figure out the solutions, I need to know what the x-intercepts are. So I'm going to do left bound and right bound. So the y values are positive when the x values are less than this decimal because that's this part right here. So I'm going to say when x is less than or equal to 0.363 or left bound, right bound, when x is greater than or equal to 4.137. Now, if you look here, this is something that happens every so often. You can see that the y value does not say zero exactly. It says one e to the negative 12. Um, that is scientific notation. That's one times 10 to the negative 12th power. That means you would take one and you would move the decimal place 12 places to the left and fill in all zeros. So the y coordinate is point zero 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 one. <laughs> so that's your calculator trying to say zero and just kind of struggling. Um, so anytime you see that, that really was a y coordinate of zero, which means that really was an x intercept, even though it looks a little bit off. Okay, so that's the solution to that inequality. Um, if you want to check it, you could think about um, second trace number one allows you to plug numbers in. So if I plug in like um, 0.2, that's a positive y value that's greater than or equal to zero. Uh, if I plug in negative five, that's a positive y value. If I plug in five, that's a positive y value. So you can kind of check your answers and make sure they make sense. Okay, um, next I'm going to go ahead and do 2 cos 2x minus x, and this is one um, where the window, the default window, negative 10 to 10, is probably not going to fly. We can go ahead and graph and see kind of what they did here. Oh, they said x value from 0 to 2 pi. So in the window, I'll go ahead and say 0 to 2 pi. And any time you have um, an interval like that that they give you for the x, this is actually a good time for you to use your zoom button. And if you do zoom fit, it will fit the window based on the x values of your interval. Zoom fit only makes a difference if you have changed the domain of the problem. And I would say even then it's not always amazing. So sometimes it does a good job, sometimes it doesn't. This is pretty good, actually. Okay, so they didn't change the window to be exactly matching this one, but the window is good enough for us to be able to see all of it. We want to know when this equation is greater than zero. So it is less than zero down here. These are all negative y values. Um, it's going to be greater than zero up here, anything to the left of that x-intercept. And since it doesn't equal zero, we are not going to include the x-intercept. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do my left bound, right bound again. So left bound, right bound. Okay, so when x is less than 0.626, okay. And then if I want to um, check some answers, I could say what's less than 0.626, like 0.5 that's greater than zero, um, 0.4 greater than zero, 0.62 greater than zero. Um, last, we want to make sure that we know how to solve equations. This is kind of what I was getting at um, before, 
is we can solve an equation um, by doing y1 for the left side and y2 for the right side and then finding their intersection. I'm going to go ahead and clear my calculator. So if I wanted to solve that equation, x to the third, 2x minus 3, then I can just do second trace, number 5, enter, enter, enter. And the intersection um, or the solution would be x equals negative 1.893. Um, this comes in handy when you have problems that have like a cos in it and then also some other, like it's a trig equation, but also a linear equation or something. And those are beyond what we know how to solve. Or maybe it's got like a trig function on one side and a logarithmic function on the other. So this is really um, helpful in calculator active problems when they're giving you something they don't think you can solve anyway. <laughs> and they just need you to be able to get the decimal. Now, the really cool thing about this is you can see I just got this intersection. If I hit second quit and then hit X on my screen, it actually takes that X value I just found and it brings it up to the screen. So that is something really cool to be able to use, especially on a calculator active problem, because now I can hit store and I could go ahead and store that. I'll store it as A or something. Now I can store it and I can use it somewhere else. So anytime you're doing a problem that's strictly calculator active, but you need that answer to do something else, that's a really good way of getting some more decimal places of accuracy without having to write it down. Okay. Your other option is like what they did here. They said this was the equation. Let's go ahead and minus the 2x over and add the 3 over and make it equal 0. And if you do that, then that means to solve the equation, you're just going to be finding the x-intercept. So now we've changed the equation. And now we can just look for that x-intercept doing our left bound and right bound again. And you can see we get the same answer.